Would you like to learn how to make beautiful tea sandwiches for your next Platinum Jubilee party? Stay tuned to the next episode of Hilltop Stovetop. Hello and welcome back to Hilltop Stovetop, the show where we're teaching you how to make great meals in an ordinary kitchen. Today we have a whole lot of stuff out here um, and this is going to be, I'll, I'll call it the grand finale to our uh, Platinum Jubilee series that we've been doing uh, to celebrate uh, Queen Elizabeth's um, 70th uh, anniversary of being on the throne. And most of the recipes that we've been dealing with have uh, been from the Coronation Cookbook from 1953 from the Toulon United Church Circle. Uh, but today we're, we're going um, off script, maybe I'll say a little bit, because one of my subscribers has specifically asked um, if we can make some tea sandwiches, because all the things that we've been making are cakes and cookies and tarts and dessert sort of things. And he said, well, what about some tea sandwiches or royal sandwiches, as he called them? Uh, now, this is a subscriber of mine that's from India, and I guess in India they call them royal sandwiches. Here they might call them tea sandwiches. Regardless, they're those little sandwiches that might come with a lovely afternoon tea. The, they can have all kinds of different fillings, and uh, the big thing is that the, the, the big thing is they have to be little. They have to be no more than one or two bites and uh, in most cases, we're gonna take the crusts off, we're gonna make them very, very dainty. And of course, we wanna make fillings that aren't all gonna fall apart. So we're gonna have things that are very um, compact. And you'll see that I've already got a lot of things chopped up. I've got celery that's chopped really, really fine. I've got shallots that are ch chopped really, really fine. And um, all kinds of things that are very, very fine. Even the, um, the butter, I wanted it to be able to spread really well, so I took just regular butter, but then I blended it in with a little bit of olive oil so it's gonna spread really easily. I've got spreadable cream cheese here, and of course there's my bread, and I've got two kinds of bread here. Uh, some of it is from the Harvest Bakery and Deli, which is on Grant Avenue, not far from here. Um, uh, the, this bread was baked fresh this morning and I specifically ordered it so that they cut it very thin so it will uh, be very dainty. And the other thing is for the rolled sandwiches, I've got tortilla wraps, I've got some of them that are spinach flavored, some that are regular flavored. Back in the, when I was a kid and my mom used to make these for all kinds of events, um, she would always use regular bread. She would have it sliced thin, but she would also get it so that it was, had it specially sliced so that it was lengthwise in the loaf. And that gave her pieces that were long enough to roll. Uh, but that was before the days when tortillas were re readily available in the store. So we're gonna do it with tortillas. If you don't have tortillas, uh, again, you can slice your bread really thin this way and that should work. Um, so the, we're going to start ahead with our uh, fillings. Uh, uh, my subscriber specifically asked for tuna. So I've got some tuna here. Um, I like, I've just discovered, I'll say, this stuff, this real Mari, which is Italian tuna. And it's packed in olive oil. Prior to this, any tuna that I, or, that I bought, I always was trying for the stuff that was packed in, um, in water because most of the North American tuna that we see is packed in safflower oil or something like that, so water seemed a better choice. But the stuff that's in olive oil is really good. So uh, we're gonna do that. Now I have drained off most of the olive oil that was in that package, but I've held on to it because I may want to add it back just uh, for a little bit of moisture. And I'm gonna add in a little bit of shallots. Not a lot of shallots, just a little. And some finely diced celery. So we've got a little bit of a crunch, but not too much. And then I'm gonna add in some lemon juice, because uh, since we're dealing with a, a fish base. 
That seemed the way to go. Now we could have gone with a mayonnaise sort of a base. Uh, in this case, I've got Miracle Whip, which is a Canadian kind of thing. Uh, Canadian, I think you can get it in some places in the States and you can get it in Germany. It's basically mayonnaise, but it's got a little more sugar and a little more vinegar than your average mayonnaise. But anyway, for this one, the olive oil and lemon juice, I think should be sufficient. And I have a whole bunch of tasting spoons here so I can taste things just to see if we need to add a little something to them. Yeah, this does need a little bit of mayonnaise. Not much, but just a little bit. Okay, so for our egg salad, we want to have these eggs nicely diced. I've got this lovely gadget that splits them up really well. If you don't have one of these, that's okay, but just make sure that you're um, slicing them into small pieces. And then we're going to add mayonnaise, Miracle Whip, whatever you've got handy. And I like to add a little bit of onion, a little, or in this case, a little bit of shallots. And I'm going to add some celery salt. To me, um, egg salad needs some saltiness to it and a little bit of celery salt will give us the uh, little bit of celery flavor. Not celery seeds, because we want something that is um, uh, not going to be black flecks in this. And then the other thing, speaking of, a little bit of color, is I have onion, green onions here, and I've chopped them up, and I've done the, the white and the green separately. So I'm going to add a little bit of the green part. If, if this was the summertime and I had chives, chives would definitely be the way to go. But that's going to add a little bit of color to this. And you'll notice that I'm using a fork for this and that's going to cream this up a little bit. We don't want too big a chunk because again we don't want filling falling out and on somebody's nice party dress or anything like that. little bit more mayonnaise. You want to add it a bit at a time because you don't want it to be too gooey. Go get a tasting spoon. Yep, I think we're good there. Okay, so there's filling number two. Filling number three is I have some chopped ham. Now I had some regular sliced black forest ham that we are going to use in a regular ham and cheese sort of sandwich, but I took some of that and I chopped it up really finely. And for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the juice from some sweet gherkin pickles. And I've already taken some of these pickles out because we are going to be using that later on. And again, a little bit of onion. And I think I'll use a little bit of green onion in this case as well. The, the white part of the green onion. And a good bit of celery here. And we'll mix this up. I'm going to add a little bit of the mayonnaise again just to, this will help 
um, hold it together. The, the pickle juice gives it the really good flavor, but you also need something that's going to give it a creaminess to hold it together. I think we're good there. Okay. So now the other fillings that I have in mind are, uh, I'm going to be doing a roast beef wrap, uh, ham and cheese sandwiches. Um, I do have some crab flavored seafood mixture here, which we'll use, uh, would be similar to doing the tuna salad. And I also have some smoked salmon that we're going to do up. And then of course, there's the old standby cucumbers, which are, you know, uh, you have to have them when you're making tea sandwiches. It's just a nice thinly sliced cucumber. So we'll chop a few more of these things up and then we'll start ready to construct some sandwiches. Okay, so we've sliced our uh, cucumbers very thinly. I peeled them, but only about half of them are peeled. So we've still got a little bit of the greenness, but by partially peeling them, we're not going to run into any uh, situations where there's um, a bitterness to it. So now we're going to take our bread and what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making it so that half of them are white and half of them are brown. So there's uh, no, no fighting that way. And uh, we're going to start by giving each one a little bit of a butter and you see how easily that spreads when you've got the olive oil mixed into it. You'll notice that I'm not taking the crusts off just yet. So we want these to have a nice finish to them. And in this case, so we're going to start with the cucumber. I am going to put a little bit of mayonnaise on this. And then a good layer of cucumbers. Now I am going to squish the cucumbers in a bit from the, from the edges. Hopefully you can see that on the overhead shot here. Um, and then a little bit of pepper. And a little bit of salt. Now I'm only making one of each of these sandwiches, but uh, of course if you were doing a big afternoon tea, you would have a whole lot of these things. So then we're going to take our other slice of bread, put it on top, and get yourself a good sharp bread knife. Get things out of the way a little bit here. And this is where we're going to cut the crusts off. Now if I'd been able to get bread that was actually what they call sandwich loaves, which are square corners, that would have been better, but this is going to be just fine. Now, before you say to yourself, oh, what are we going to do with all of these bits left over? All these pieces left over, we're going to for all of these, we're going to put them in a little bowl here. And then afterwards, I'm going to make up um, something for dinner. Um, those of you that have been watching for a while have probably seen my video on um, um, bread pudding, which is a dessert made out of leftover bread. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these leftover bits, which are going to have bits of leftover filling in them as well. And I'm going to make it into a savory casserole, just a little one for my, di my dinner tonight. Okay. Now in this case, if I made these into a quarter, they'd be really just one bite sandwiches. So I'm going to cut it in thirds. And this is the tricky part here. Okay, now I don't have one of those fancy three-tiered plates, but I do have all of these lovely plates that I inherited from my grandmother. 
So we're going to start putting sandwiches on these because they are perfect for afternoon tea. Okay, so there's our cucumber sandwiches. Now we'll go ahead and do our next one. Set that safely somewhere. So again, the same process, we're going to butter it. The next one we're going to do is the tuna. So all we have to do is uh, just put the tuna on. We don't have to worry about doing any um, extra other than the uh, butter on these ones. And we're going to go gently with the filling because we don't want things that are going to plop out on people's dresses. This one I think we can do into quarters because um, this we've, we're, we're not right at the, the end of the bread, so it's a little bit bigger slice. Okay, so uh, we had a little break there and I made up a whole bunch of other ones. Uh, so we've got the cucumber, tuna, this is ham and cheese, and I very specifically went with a, um, an English cheddar instead of just some cheese product. I wanted to make sure that that was a good quality uh, English cheddar. And then our egg salad. So um, now probably I could have done all of these in thirds like I did with the, um, the cucumber. Uh, it depends on the bread that you have. Also because this is really, really, really fresh bread from um, Harvest Bakery, uh, it was really quite soft, so I had to be very gentle, tried a couple of different knives, made sure I got the one that was working the best for it. And so now we're going to start on some wraps. Now one mixture that I didn't do up ahead of time, and I should have, but this is got to be one of the easiest fillings I have ever heard of. So this is spreadable cream cheese. And I'm just going to reach over here and all we're going to do is take this spreadable cream cheese which I have brought to room temperature so it's a little easier to, um, to handle. And then we're going to add in green onions. And dried cranberries. So this is so easy, you won't believe it, just these three ingredients. I'm not sure what the exact measurements are, just one of those till it feels right kind of things. And we're going to mix these all together. seems strange onions and cranberries together but it really comes out very nice and this is actually one that you um, makes a head very well um, matter of fact like it's sort of the thing you could if you were having an after work party you could make it up uh, the beginning of the day and it would probably be even better by the end of the day so now we're going to start working on our tortillas and the trouble with tortillas is that they're round. I mean, they, they have their purpose, but when they're round like this and you're trying to make rolled sandwiches with them, you end up with 
one thick part in the middle and another part that's just wimpy kind of. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to take one and I'm going to cut it in quarters. And then I'm going to use these quarters to square it off like that. There. That makes sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little dab of filling to glue it together here. rest of it. Now, one thing is don't um, take it right to the edge here. Uh, we're going to, because as we roll it, there's going to be some that squeezes out, I'll say. While I'm working away on this, I'm going to tell you guys a story about these tea sandwiches. Uh, I'm filming this in March in Winnipeg, which is the time of year when the weather can change quite dramatically. And there's some quite famous blizzards that have happened, including the one in 1966. And in 1966, my mother was working on a committee that was organizing a fundraising tea and her and a friend of hers had got together and made, I'm sure it was at least a thousand sandwiches like this. Now they were experts at it. They do a, did a much better job than I ever will. But they had all these sandwiches ready to go. And then the blizzard of 66 hit with, I think it was more than 30 centimeters of snow, 114 kilometer an hour winds, uh, the airport in Winnipeg had zero visibility for 14 consecutive hours. So needless to say, their uh, uh, tea wasn't happening. And so what they did was my dad took all of these sandwiches, packed them all up, put them on the toboggan, and walked out from our house because the, the streets weren't cleared walked from our house to one of the main streets where he was able to catch a bus, put the toboggan on the bus, and take those down to one of the homeless shelters. And to this day, we laugh about all of these people that at the homeless shelter that probably had the classiest dinner because they had these little teeny weeny tea sandwiches. So anyway, so we're going to, uh, we put that all together. We've got that wrapped up. And uh, by adding those corners in, I've got a little bit more out of this. Now, not to worry though, because these bits that I'm cutting off the end, again, they're going into that uh, casserole that I'm making myself for dinner. And then in this case, we're just going to carefully cut these into circles. And there we have our nifty little rolled sandwich. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing with our egg salad, but I'm going to put a pickle in the middle. So just give me a minute to get this cut up and put away, and then we'll go on to that next one. Okay, so now we're ready to go on to our ham salad. And for that one, I am going to use a little bit of butter to uh, hold this all together. has to be our glue here. Okay. 
Then we're going to take these sweet gherkins and lay them end to end on this. And then that's going to become the core of our sandwich. Now, what you can do is you can make the rolls up ahead of time and then just wrap them in plastic and uh, cut them when you're ready to serve them. Don't, uh, you know, like if you tried to cut them now and then wait a few hours, they're inclined to dry out. You can cover it with uh, a little damp paper towel and then plastic wrap, but it's just as easy if you've got the time to uh, wrap it up when it's at this stage, when it's just in the roll, and then slice it um, as you need them for serving. Okay. So there's our, our ham salad. Now I'm going to do similar rolls, except with the spinach wrap. And I've got uh, some roast beef and a little horseradish and some pickled onions. So I'll roll that up and then the other one that I'm going to do is cream cheese and capers. Now capers are actually little pickled, um, these are flower buds and uh, they're pickled and they have a lemony uh, kind of olive oil uh, flavor to them. So that's what makes them go really well with, uh, with the smoked fish. So we're going to have cream cheese smoked salmon, capers, and a little bit of uh, uh, sliced shallots. And I think that that's about what we've got ready to go here. So give me a minute to uh, get on to the next stage and uh, we'll see you as we get closer to the end. Okay, so uh, we're ready for our next one. I've switched over to a spinach tortilla now and I've put butter and horseradish on this one because what I've got here is some nice sliced roast beef, which seems very British to me. And uh, I'll put a real, a good layer of this on here, I think. And then I have some spinach. And I have some little pickled onions. So similar to what I did with the ham where I had a row of, of, of sweet gherkins. I'm going to put a little roll of pickled onions across here. I'm just going to take a little bit more. These spinach ones are much better size, really. Probably, yeah, they're, when we get into the middle, it's, it's good. The ones at the end are kind of loose, uh, but the ones in the middle are, are good. That's where letting it sit for a little while so the, the tortilla can work its way around it is, is a good thing. So there we've got our roast beef ones ready to go. Next ones I'm going to do are the, um, the smoked salmon. Um, and uh, like I said, they, I did have some crab, crab meat, but I don't think I've got enough plate space for that. And that would be just the same as you would for, um, for the tuna. 
mixing that up with a little onions and celery and uh, probably some mayonnaise on that one. So let me finish cutting this one up and then we'll get on to our smoked salmon. Alrighty, so now we're ready to go on with our smoked salmon. So I've taken my tortilla, I've uh, covered it with cream cheese already, and then I'm going to do the capers. And the reason I'm, I'm doing the capers and the onions in between the, um, the salmon and the cream cheese, because that will, that way we can, they'll kind of stick to the cream cheese and not roll around quite as much. And then I've got these shallots that I, I just thinly slice them. The other ones that I, that I put in the, um, in the egg salad and the, the ham salad and so on, I had uh, diced them well. But these ones, I thought, well, I'll make it a, I don't know if it'll show up that they're sliced versus diced, but that's the plan anyway. And then I am, I do have my lemon here, which has still got some juice left in it. So I'm just going to give it a quick little. There we go. Again, just like we did on our other ones, we are going to roll these up. Alrighty, so there's our smoked salmon and cream cheese. So we're just going to plate these up, clear a little bit of stuff out of the way, and then we'll have the grand finale. All right, so here we are, um, a, a, a tiny sample of each one. Um, I'm sure that the Queen's chef would have done a much fancier job than this, but it's a pretty good start for somebody that's a little out of practice. One thing I forgot about was to talk about cookie cutters. And so some of these ones here that I did with uh, just plain bread, we could have cut them into circles using the cookie cutter and again just had the residual amount that's going to go into this funny casserole that I'm going to make later on. And uh, But other than that, uh, the, again the main thing is one or two bites and um, this, the sky's the limit. Just use your imagination. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's peanut butter and jam or if it's something really fancy. So we've got, in what I did here today, we've got cucumber, we've got tuna salad, we've got ham and cheese, we've got egg salad, uh, smoked salmon with capers and um, shallots, we've got uh, roast beef with horseradish and pickled onions and spinach, we've got cream cheese with cranberries and green onions, and we've got ham salad with sweet gherkin pickles. And that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to tea sandwiches. So uh, let your imagination run wild, cut it into whatever shapes you want, roll them up, use whatever bread. Um, it is better, it, the, the rolling part or the, the, the cutting is kind of tricky when it's really, really fresh bread. But again, you want to make sure that you've got it thinly sliced. So we hope that you enjoyed today's episode of Hilltop Stovetop, where we've made tea sandwiches as the grand finale to our uh, Platinum Jubilee celebration. And uh, that if you liked today's episode, you'll remember to like and subscribe. And don't forget to go back and look at all those other videos that we did uh, from the Toulon United Church Coronation Cookbook from 1953. So we'll see you at the next episode. Bye-bye for now. Mm -hmm.